Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and you're watching The Brown Feminist. In this video, I will be showing you a day in the life of a clinical research coordinator. Now, while I have been promoted to a research associate every now and then, I do have to do the tasks of a research coordinator for a few days or a few weeks to support my team members who are coordinators that may be on leave or for whatever reason they may be double booked and unable to do that week's tasks. So the first thing you should know about a research coordinator is that their work actually starts long before the actual day or the actual shift either the night before or very very early in the morning like around 5 or 6 a.m i wake up and i log into the hospital's electronic medical record system to go through all of the patients who are coming to see the physicians that day by going through the patient lists i'm able to go through all of the inclusion and exclusion criteria and identify potentially eligible patients once I have my leave, I get dressed, grab my coffee, and head over to whichever branch of the hospital that I will be you know, meeting that patient for that particular day. I cover multiple sites, so each time I might be going to a different of these hospital branches, depending on where in which department I have identified my potential trial patient. Once I go in, I set up my desk. Usually if I get to go to my home base where I have my office set up, it's a little bit easier. If not, I have my laptop and everything else, kind of informed consent forms, case report forms, everything ready to go in my binders. I have a really excellent relationship with the admitting clerk, the nurses, the PSWs, administrative assistants, and everyone else. We make a great team together collaborating on these things. So all I need to do is give them my list of patients that I'm hoping to speak to that day. And as soon as they arrive, they will make sure the patient is open to having a chat with a researcher and then hand them over my way. Once the patient has arrived, of course, I already have my clipboards ready to go with all the informed consent forms, all of the case report forms, you know, eligibility checklists and everything else ready to go so I can have that consenting discussion with them. Now, it really depends on the study if I get to receive consent on the same day or not. Now, of course, there is no guarantee it's going to be a consent. It might be just declining. But whatever it is, the decision might be done on the spot for very straight cut, low risk studies. While they might be more, you know, longer consenting discussions taking a few days and I might send the patient home or send them over to their procedure um, with that consent form in hand, maybe to later on look over, read through and I can call them again or give them an email whichever they prefer to kind of continue on that conversation and see how they're feeling about study participation. Once this is done, I go ahead with a lot of my study visits. So study visits are typically when patients are coming in, they're already enrolled in the study, they're randomized to whichever drug or placebo they're receiving or whatever arm of a procedure they're being randomized to. And I obviously, unfortunately, cannot show that to you, but I go ahead into all these procedure rooms, follow all of the, you know, IPAC rules, all of the infection prevention and control protocols, all of the confidentiality protocols, and then I go ahead and do all of my data collection during that time. Of course, any kind of break I have in between two patients when I'm waiting around, it's an excellent time to go ahead and answer my emails, to catch up on data entry, to catch up on some REB renewals and submissions, to catch up on anything else that might be kind of desk work, which needs a little bit of time in between active engagement with patients. And before you know it, I start getting pretty tired. It's already been four or five hours. It's now noon and it's lunchtime. So I hang up the phone, I've had my conversations and done my patient follow-ups, and it's time for lunch. Now lunch might look different every single day because some days when I have the energy, I will actually cook and pack a nice lunch and take it with me. Other days, I'm just eating from hospital cafeterias. Now, I'm pretty lucky. All three of the hospitals have decent cafeterias, some of which are subsidized. And if you don't feel like having what's in the hospital cafeteria, we also have like other like retail kind of um, restaurants. Like we have Subway, Tim Hortons and other things. So on this day, I grabbed a Subway sandwich. But there are other days when I just make like a really good homemade mac and cheese or something else. And I bring them over to the hospital. During the summer months in particular, I really enjoy going out for a lunchtime walk. 
Lunchtime is up and I'm back to work at my desk. The second part of my day might look different or might look similar to the first half. It really depends on the week and the day. One of the other things that I do as a clinical research coordinator is obviously to go in with patients, do the data collection, but also collect biological samples. So there is a some degree of lab work that goes into this role. So sometimes I can be processing stool samples, blood samples, maybe urine, could be sputum, could be actual organ or tissue biopsy samples. Sometimes I have to ship them locally, internationally, just drop them off at the lab. Really depends on the protocol of that study. But in terms of biological samples, whatever you can think of, I have handled it. I have processed it. I've had a lot of experience in this regard. There are some nursing activities as well, interventions, specific administration of drugs and therapies, which I'm also able to do because I do happen to be a registered nurse in addition to be a clinical research coordinator. Because I sometimes go into the OR, I go into different endoscopy, colonoscopy rooms, and I'm on my feet, sitting, standing, standing, and sitting sometimes for hours at a time. My heel does begin to hurt, and so lately I've been really looking into getting different shoes. While I do invest in a very good pair of shoes every couple of years, the sole seems to wear away a lot. Now, instead of investing in brand new shoes every six months, I decided to try out some insoles. So there's this new brand called Remind Insoles that actually sent me some samples um, from a specific product of theirs called The Medic, and I'm really excited to be trying them and doing this review for you guys. So Remind insoles are actually premium orthotics that are manufactured and they focus on bringing comfort and support to our daily lives through three main things. Firstly, their goal is to improve foot and joint alignment, prevent any kind of foot injuries and improve cushioning of the feet. And I think the part that helps me the most is the idea of supporting the arches and improving cushioning under my heel. I think that's the kind of pain that I have been having. So they're known to be pain-free insoles that have been crafted over 40 years with biomechanics and biomedical practices and have done rigorous testing on their products with help of some of the world's most elite athletes. So I might not be an athlete, but I am a healthcare worker and I am a researcher and I do have to spend hours just kind of standing and sitting in the hospital. So the product of theirs that I liked the most was the Medic. And the special feature of the Medic is that it's meant for people with mid to high arches. So I do think I have mid to high arch and I don't think I have enough support when I buy like a typical pair of shoes. And I think that makes me like put a lot more pressure in that place in the middle as well as the heels. So this does have self molding technology and high impact absorption. So I'm really excited that I'm trying it this week and honestly speaking, wearing this versus not wearing this is a huge difference. One issue that I had is that I ordered my insoles at the same size as my shoes and sometimes it can be a tight fit to get them into your shoes. So I recommend ordering a half size down. So if your shoe size is maybe a Canadian or a US 8, maybe get a 7.5 for your insoles because they're sturdy and solid and thick. It takes up a little bit of room inside your shoes. I also noticed that it goes best with shoes where you can actually remove the old insole. I know some shoes that are slightly cheaper can have the insoles completely glued down. In those cases, when you're putting in a new insole, like from Remind, it can get like a little bit too high and your feet might feel tight. So I'm really happy to be using them with my old like Nikes and my old Adidas, where the soles after a period of time were starting to wear away with my usage and wear and tear. And I was able to replace it, take it out and put my insoles in. And immediately I could feel like the support, it was completely, completely different. There are two types that I'm trying out right now. One is like the 5.5 millimeter and the other one is like a seven millimeter. So there's like difference in the arch height support. And there's also like a slight difference in how much space is in the front of the foot versus the back. So I'm, I'm going to be comparing a little bit more about which of these two fit me the best. But I think that's something like you might want to like try out for yourself as well. But so far, I've worn it for two weeks already. And I have to say that this has made a huge impact in me not crying and staying awake at night and having to take Tylenol pills because my heels just hurt so bad from standing in one position on my heel for hours on end. So I also do have a affiliate link for their product. If you would like to check them out, it will be right down in the description below. 
So overall, that is it for my video today. And this was the day in the life of a clinical research coordinator working on clinical trials at an academic hospital setting. If you have any questions, of course, as always, don't forget to comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. You can also reach out to me by email at thebrownfeminist90 at gmail.com as well as on Instagram. DM me anytime. Happy to chat with you. Until next time, this was The Brown Feminist. Bye.